Hi, I'm Kathleen Lyon of the American Museum of Science and Energy, and today we're going to make an electroscope. An electroscope is a very simple device that you can use to detect static electricity. The first step is to get a bottle, preferably one that doesn't have a charge on it. This bottle is clear as well. That's important because we want to be able to see inside. This sponge is simply a piece of a larger sponge that I cut with scissors. Once again, you can see about how large it is based on the scale to my fingers. We'll be using a wire like this. It's about the width of my hand, as you can see. You curl one edge, curl the other edge up, and you can use copper. You could use any wire, really. Copper is generally the easiest to find. You'll cut it with a wire cutter, or you can cut it with scissors if it's thin enough. Our final step is to get two pieces of aluminum foil. These have been cut with scissors. Last step, we take a hole punch. We punch a hole in the top of each piece. Now it's time to assemble the electroscope. You'll take your wire and we're going to put the curvy side down. Place one piece of aluminum foil on the wire, then a second piece right next to it. At this point, I'm going to give you a little hint. It helps if you flatten the pieces and then actually kind of make them where they curve out from one another just a little bit at the edges, like this, so they slope outward. Now we're going to lower the aluminum foil strips into the bottle. If the aluminum foil strips are too thick, you can always cut them and make them a little thinner on either side. They'll be suspended about halfway into the bottle, not touching the sides. How do we hold it in place? We use the sponge. So we wrap the sponge around the wire and now that it's in place, we can raise and lower our wire into place where the full is not touching the sides. And now we're ready for a test. Now electrons have moved from my hair to the balloon. The balloon material is a material that likes to grab onto electrons more than my hair does. As I move the electron-laden balloon close to the wire, the negative electrons easily travel along wire because it's a conductor. I'm moving the balloon close to the wire and then away. We can see that this balloon is charged. There are plenty of other things in your home that you can test as well, other than a balloon. You can also test styrofoam. I'm going to rub electrons off of the wool onto the styrofoam. And nothing is happening. So you can test all sorts of items around your house, but know this, if it's a humid day, lots of water molecules in the air, not as many things are going to hold that charge. So you may want to test it on a dry day in the winter when the heater's running for best results. A summer day when the air conditioner's running and there's lots of moisture in the building and you can feel the humidity, not a good time to try to make static electricity. Scientists need to know about static electricity when they send rovers to places like Mars. As Perseverance rolls across the dry Martian terrain, charges can build up and short out the rover's circuitry, and there's no one around to fix it. For this reason, small needles are installed on NASA's rovers so that extra electrons can dissipate gradually. Even before the rover leaves Earth, its delicate electronics must be protected. So scientists and engineers wear special gear to prevent static discharges while they're working. NASA has to keep their rovers in good operating condition and that's why static electricity matters.